Welcome back ladies, in this video I will be changing this rear end out of the 79 Camaro and we're putting in a Ford 9 inch from Quick Performance. First order of business, we're going to take these caps off the U-joint, these are 11mm. The car is in neutral, I'm going to take these two out. Okay, now grab the drive shaft, push it forward, and now over here, just slide it out the shaft. Okay, now you put this little butt, butt plug here. That's cool, where can I buy that? Listen, Brianna, I have another one for you later. Oh, wow. Now I take the shock off, I'm putting an Allen over here, a 3 16 We're going to be here for a while, folks. I'm going to take the sway bar off. And jack up the rear a little bit. And these come right off. And now you can just grab this and it moves out of the way. Now we're going to disconnect the rear brake line. Take this clip off. Now loosen this. And pop that out. All right, now we'll put a jack underneath the leaf spring here so the whole rear end doesn't flop over. And it's a good idea to put jacks, jacks on both sides of the leaf springs like this. And now I'm going to take this off. All right, now, as you can see, this is loose. The shock will also come off. You just lower this slowly. And you can do the same thing on the other side, like we did over here. All right, now the whole rear end is floating. Okay, now take the top shackle off the leaf spring on both sides. And now this bolt this should come right out. And there should be no tension on the spring here. And now the other side. All right, now I'm going to lower it and I'm going to get the e brake cables off. So I'm going to lower it slowly. And this is chained over here, so. And my partner Moisha is holding it. On the other side. All right, now for the e brake, just grab this, twist it over, and pull it up. And do the same thing on the other side. And she's out. So this is the rerun we're putting in from Quick Performance. This is how they shipped it in the box. It's bare. And we also asked for the drain, for the, sorry, for the, there's a drain plug underneath and the fill plug on top. This is really good if you get a rear like this because it's a little annoying with the nine inches to change the oil. So now we're gonna assemble the whole thing on this transmission jack. All right, so first thing we're doing here is we spray some brake cleaner in here just to get this as clean as we can get it. So 
we could start putting this together. All right, so this is the rear, the pumpkin that they uh, send you from Quick Performance. It's all assembled. We also got a lube locker, but we're not going to use this. We're going to use uh, Permatex Ultra Gray to seal it. And over here, they give you a little tag. Tells you how to break it in, what additive, to, if you need a positive additive or not, what oil to use. And this is nice and sweet here. Everything is ready to go. So we're going to pop this out. We clean the surface, the mating surface over here. So we're going to put the studs in there and put the whole pumpkin right in. Okay, so they give you, they give you these studs to put in the rear. These are for the housing in the middle for the pumpkin. So what I did was I took a nut from one of these T-bolts and a couple of washers and I'm going to drive this in using that nut. And these are the holes you put it in. We already put in a few. So you put it in the rear from behind and you want that knurling to go into that hole and dig into it. And I'm putting three washers here and we're going to put that nut over it also. All right, now it's in. We just got to crank it down now by hand until that bottoms out. Oh, that's good. And we we'll go ahead and do the rest now. And it's a good idea to do this with uh, hand tools because if you impact them, you might screw up the threads. And the last one. Washers. And that's good. And they're all good and seated. Okay, now spray some brake cleaner on the towel and clean the mating surface of the third member. Okay, now we're going to put a big that bead right here, right in the middle, and we're going to go around with it. And I'm also going around the bolt holes a little bit. Alright, and we're done. And that's what it should look like. I, put, I like to put a nice thick bead all around here, especially in the bottom. And pick her up. Wow, you're strong. I know, I know. And pop her in. Tap it in. So we're pretty much in, now we're just going to drive down the nuts. These are also 9 sixteenths, these are nylocks. These go down to 35 foot pounds. So just go around and evenly torque these down. Uh, one other thing down here, don't put it in all the way in. Maybe a quarter of an inch out, so you could slide the nut in through here from the stud. So once you do that, you'll be fine. You can just torque these down. I'm going to go ahead all around here, so I tighten these down. And they're all torqued down. All right, before we put the seal in or the axle in, I'm just going to scuff up over here with some light grit uh, sandpaper, the inner part of the axle tube, because uh, I want the RTV to have somewhere to stick on. So do that, do that real quick. Use some brake cleaner here and clean it out. Alright, so they also give you seals here. We're going to put, put the axles in now. I'm going to use some gear lube and put it around the inside of the seal so it doesn't rip when we put the axle in. Just going to go around, around the inside of the seal over here and lube that puppy up.
I'm going to use some ultra gray around the seal over here. So you can go around and put a light coating on it. And you can also put some around here where the seal is going to sit. And that's good. Now you can put the seal in. It goes in this way. Now get a socket the size of the seal. Pop that in there. And bottom the seal out. And that's bottomed out. Alright, so these are the axles. And this is the bearing over here. So same procedure here. We're going to rough up this outer surface of this race over here. Going around. And clean it up with some brake cleaner. Clean this up. Now put some ultra gray on this race. And now we're just going to put some RTV around here where it's going to seat the bearing. And that's done. Now put the axles in. Be careful you don't rip the seal. And keep the edge of the axle up a little bit when you're putting this in. So you go into the diff in the back. Now when you're here, pop it up a little bit, and turn it, that's it. Then use a rubber mallet at the end over here, and just tap this in. And that's seated. The bearing should face should be actually popping out about an eighth of an inch, and that's good. I'm just going to wipe away this excess RTV here. And that's all clean. All right, so we mocked up the left side of this axle tube over here, just to see how everything looks. This is play with the brackets here and everything. Uh, the problem here is we have staggered shocks, meaning one shot goes on this side of the axle tube, one shot goes on the other side, of the, the, the shot goes on this side of the axle tube. So we have to move these calipers around which is a bit of a pain. Um, you need two right side calipers to do this. So this looks pretty much good. Uh, now let me show you the right side of this. And this is the right side. We mocked it up, but the problem is these holes don't line up with the flange over here. So we just, one put, we just put one T-bolt in through here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make holes, we're gonna drill holes in this plate. Two more holes to put bolts through. Uh, Quick Performance also sent us these. Uh, these have a little notch here to hold the bearing in when you pop this on. It sandwiches the bearing between this and the flange. But the problem is these holes aren't lining up with anything. So to make this work, we would have to actually uh, probably weld material in here and re-drill it. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to use the regular one they supplied and just drill holes on that. So go ahead and do that now. Okay, so this is what it looks like. We took the outer bracket off, the caliper bracket. And this is what the flange bracket looks like. So I'm going to get a scribe and go from behind and scribe it so I know where to put the hole. And same thing on the other bolt hole. And I take the bracket off, we flip it around. These are the two holes we've got to make. One, two. Punch it. Put some tap magic on his drill bit. I'm going to start off with a small drill bit and make my way up. So I'm up a couple of size drill, drill bits and now this is the last one. good and now the bracket goes on it sits exactly where we want it use some thread locker blue on these and tighten these down put the lock washers on and if you see on the other side here these are t-bolts so you don't have to hold them they're just gonna butt up against the axle tube here and you're just gonna tighten them down now put the nuts on And 
they're all tight. Now this is also the time to pop the lugs out if you want longer lugs. So we already popped these out, we have longer lugs in place. And you just hammer these out and these pop right out. Just make sure the knurling side is the same as the hole that you're uh, putting them in when you order the new ones. So this is a quick performance rear disc brake kit that we got with this setup. And quick performance gives you this bracket. And these are four holes, there's four holes here. They give you the bolts. You put them this way, you put a space through here. And you put the bolt in like that. And there's a lock, nylock lock over here. And you put that on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and put all four bolts in. These are all 9 sixteenths, so go ahead and tighten these down. And the brackets on. Alright, so we're spraying this down with brake cleaner just to clean this up. And we're going to shoot some uh, spray paint on it so it doesn't rust. Alright, so the brake kit also comes with rotors, so we're going to clean these up with some brake cleaner on both sides. Okay, now we're going to put the lugs in. This is a Lyle tool. It's got a bearing in it, and it helps put the lugs on. And put the lug nuts on here, and torque this down with the gun. And they're all on. I'm just you, I'm gonna leave that in there to hold the rotor in place. All right, now you see this pad? It flaps around a little bit. Before I put this pad on, I like to squeeze these tabs down a little bit so it could hug the caliper better. So you gotta do is just go ahead, gotta squeeze these in. Go ahead and do that. Now when you put this on, it's actually a little hard to put on, and that's perfect. See how it's held in place? So you're not going to hear, sometimes when you press the brake, when you're going real slow, you hear this flopping around the back. So now you're not going to hear any noise back there. Now put the caliper on. Pin in through here. Bring this up. And now the bottom pin. And the caliper's on. All right, now before we put the rear end in, these U-bolts, we're gonna use the factory brackets underneath for the leaf springs. And these don't fit, so we gotta drill these a little bigger. We're using a half inch drill bit, and I already put some tap magic in there. So go ahead and drill these holes, baby. And these are now good. All right, so another issue here is this spring, this knob over here, is about 560 thousandths of an inch diameter and let's check how much it is on the rear end and on the rear end it's about 490 thousandths so about you know 70 thousandths of an inch uh, smaller here so we're going to drill this open all right, so we did here, we took a step drill bit, we grind down the end over there, as you can see it's flat, because we have to drill these open right there, and we don't want to go in too deep because we don't want to puncture the tube and we're going to have a leak over there. So we're just going to go ahead and use that and drill these a little bigger. And that should be good. Now we're putting it in. 
Alright, so the rear end is in place and we got the leaf springs, we're going to push them up and put them where they're supposed to be. And now the other side. Now I'm just going to hand tighten the nuts because we're going to tighten everything down once the car is on its own weight and the suspension is loaded. Alright, now the rear end is a little higher than where we need it, so we're just going to lower it a little bit, try to line it up with the knobs. And now the other side. And that's in two. So this is the U-bolt bracket. We also got a new pad. That's going to sit right in there. And that goes over there. And this is the stock bracket that we were using. And this supply you with the U-bolts. So put those through. The washer and the nut that the supply you with in the kit. You like that? Sure do. That's just to hold it in place. Sway bars and go back on when the car is on the ground, so I'm just gonna hand tighten the rest of these nuts. Now we're gonna jack up the rear end and put the shocks in. And now put the bushing in, this, and we're gonna tighten this down a little bit, and the rest we're gonna do while the car is sitting on its weight. Alright, now we can just take this out of here. Everything's being supported. Alright, so we got these tabs. We actually got it from the old rear end. I'm going to use a soapstone here to mark where this is going to go. I'm going to weld this in. And now I'll weld it. And this one is going to be welded right there. So we got to weld this one too. So here's what we got. It goes in there nicely. And on this side, it's all mocked up. And that also goes in there nicely. Just like that. Now we're going to make the hard lines. Alright, now you can make your own lines. Um, this actual line we had laying around, this was from AutoZone. So we need one side over here. We need a bubble flare to go into these soft lines. And over here on this block, this is a third gen, this is a third generation Camaro Firebird um, hose in the middle here. And this is, I believe it's an inverted flare in here. So we're gonna use the double flare, the bubble flare on one end, and we're gonna flare the inside with the inverted flare. So it's a 316th line, like I said, we're just gonna bend this from here go over here and we're going to cut it here and flare it. So it's going to go right there and we're just going to bend the line that's good, that's good. and we're just going to cut it over there. We cut it right there slowly because this is a uh, soft nickel copper we in the inside okay now we put the stainless steel spring on it the gravel protector that's good all right now we're going to use this tool on the vise we're just going to double flare this it's a 45 degree inverted flare Operation zero, pushes it flat. Then we go operation one, three sixteenths. Then operation two, three sixteenths. And that should be a good double flare. Let's check that out. 
All right, so we did a little line over here on the other side, and this is what it looks like. And this is all mocked up over here, mocked up over there. We put the clip over here. That's what it looks like. All the way around over there. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and tighten that down. We're holding the block with an adjustable wrench, using a flare end, flared wrench on the other side to tighten it down. So we go ahead and, and tighten up the whole hard line. All right, so these are the brake hoses that we got. This is from AutoZone, the Duralast hoses, but I believe it's a 97 Cadillac we asked for, DeVille. And this is what they look like. So we're gonna put a copper wash on the bottom and a copper wash on top. Don't double these up on one side or else it's gonna leak. And pop the banjo bolt in and tighten that down. That's a 10 millimeter bolt and this should be fairly tight so you could crush the copper washers. And that's good. Alright, so the lines are all good for the brake lines. Everything's tight. It's tight over here. These are all good. Okay, now for the vent tube. You already have the barb on there. So you're going to pop this on. It's a 3 8 hose. And that's not going anywhere. I'm just going to zip tie this over here to the brake line. And that should be good for that vent. Now we're going to fill this up. Go to the fill hole here. And this is a true track, no limited slip additive. We're putting two and a half quarts of 8090 bubbling in. Go ahead and put those in there. And we are done here. And close this down. So I'm gonna go ahead and bleed the brakes now. I'm assuming most of you know how to do this. If not, I have a video showing how to do it and I'm gonna put that link in the description below. So I'm just gonna go ahead and bleed everything now. All right, now for the drive shaft. We had to measure for the drive shaft because it was too small, the drive shaft that was on here stock. I would advise you consult with your drive shaft shop before measuring it because they all want, they all have different ways of measuring it. Uh, the way we did it was with the ground, the car was on the ground and we measured from the tail shaft to the seal over here, all the way over here to the face of this right here. So we went to our drive shaft shop and we got this right here. All ready, baby. So let's put it in the rear. Take the butt plug out and put the drive shaft in. And once you put the slip yoke in, you go ahead and put this in. This came with the rear end, so put the U-bolts in. And they come with lock washers and nuts for the other side. Transmission is neutral, so I just put a little pry bar here to hold that. And they're both tight. Okay, now we have the car on blocks. Now we can install the sway bar. And these were hand tied over here because I got to take these off and put the sway bar bracket on there with the bushing. And same thing on the other side. So I'm just going to go ahead and zip these off. Let's put the bushing on here. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, now position this, put the bracket on the U-bolt. Put the bolt, the nuts in. Nut washer, and do the same thing on the other side.
And now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all four nuts down. And all four are tightened. I'm also gonna do the other side. Now that the shackles for the springs are tight, uh, we're also gonna make our way over here to the shock and tighten that down. And that's good. Okay, now I'm gonna tighten these down here. That's the last thing I'm gonna do on the ground. And they're all tight. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is put e-brake cables on. But we're not gonna use the universal ones from Quick Performance. We're gonna use other ones. We're gonna use the same ones we used on the video. And we did the whole full brake setup in this car. And that link I'm gonna put in the description below. So we're gonna wrap this video up. We don't have to, we don't, I don't wanna make this video too long. And we painted the rear end. We used some Rust-Oleum Black with a paintbrush. Got the whole thing down, looks nice. And this is what it looks like. We're going to go ahead now and break it in on the road. And that concludes this video of the rear end install. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Like me, share me. Also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Clowny1969. Also, when you subscribe, don't forget to, to check the notification icon. Also, check out my description for a link to my new apparel. See ya!